सो हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू दिस न्यू वीडियो सो प्रीवियसली वी हैव डिस्कस्ड विद द रेजिस्टेंसेस एंड कैपेसिटेंस एस्टीमेशन इन माय प्रीवियस वीडियो एंड इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो आई हैव सीन विद द मॉस डिवाइस कैपेसिटेंसेस इन दैट वी हैव डिस्कस्ड मेनी टाइप्स ऑफ कैपेसिटेंस दैट इज फर्स्ट इज गेट कैपेसिटेंस एंड दैट गेट कैपेसिटेंस आल्सो वी हैव सीन इन डिफरेंट ऑपरेटिंग रीजंस that is a linear cut off and saturation and we have seen the working of that gate capacitance along with that we have seen what the the equation and we have compared it with all the uh, uh, all the gate capacitances in different regions also we have come up with an equation of the gate capacitance that is the final gate capacitance that is equal to cgb plus cgs plus cgd okay and for that also we have compared it with the different regions of operations also we have discussed the diffusion capacitance and the routing capacitance in that previous video so in those previous videos uh, we have discussed it so please go and watch it those who have not watched it so now here we are going to continue with the concept that is we have left with only few videos now switching characteristics okay so in this switching characteristics we are going to discuss uh, uh, with respect to the load capacitance okay so we are going to see the switching character the switching means uh, simply the charging and discharging of the signals okay the charging and discharging would be taking place with respect to the time delays that is rise file uh, rise time fall time and delay time so you hope you might be knowing what is rise time delay time and fall time so that charging and discharging would be taking place with respect to these parameters okay so yeah let us discuss this in detail now the switching speed of a cmos gate is limited primarily by the time it takes charge and discharge the load capacitance as i have told so when an input transition occurs the output undergoes a corresponding transition either charging cl towards vdd or it discharges towards vss okay so the input transition would be occurring only towards vdd or vss okay the charging or discharging would be taking place would be a charging a charging of the load capacitance would be towards uh, vdd and the discharging would be taking towards vss okay or the ground so the key definitions are this, uh, this is the diagram here and here you see the graph in this you could see the rise time and the fall time okay so you see here this is the td that is the delay time before that let us see the fall time so here they have mentioned this as fall time you see here the fall time means basically from constant uh, it is getting uh, decreased to towards uh, vss okay that is a uh, ground that is zero you see here that time it uh, that time taken for the change uh, to uh, uh, from uh, the constant value up to zero that complete time taken is called as fall time and the delay time is here this is the delay time that is from this point to this point okay that is the drastic change that is the sudden change occurring that is the delay time okay so here also this is the uh, fall uh, rise time so here from this point up to up to the time where it take where, where it becomes constant is called as the rise time okay so these are the parameters which you need to be discussing rise time fall time and delay time so before proceeding we define a few important timing parameters uh, referring the above figure that is rise time so rise time is represented as tr Uh, time for a voltage waveform to rise from 10% to 90% of its final steady state value uh, uh, from the switching characteristic plot is called as the rise time next is fall time that is uh, t suffix f time for voltage waveform to fall from 90% to 10% of its steady state value is called as fall time then the delay time td time difference between the 50% transition level of the input and the corresponding 50% level of the output this represents the time for the logic transition to propagate through the gate okay so the delay time is basically in the bit in between rise time and fall time the 50% transition level is there between the rise and fall time that is called as the delay time okay it would be taking place between the input side as well as the output side so these are the key parameters which you need to be knowing for rise time fall time and delay time next is inverter with load capacitance so the figure a that is this figure shows the standard cmos inverter driving a capacitance of load cl okay the input capacitance has subsequent stages okay so see in this figure here this is the load capacitance which we where we are having a two inverter 
where the output of one inverter is given as the input of the second inverter due to the slowed capacitance in between the output would be directly dependent on the input because of the capacitance provided here okay so the cascading problem there won't be any cascading problem between the inverters okay if they are connected like this we should be attaching the load capacitance in between next let us see very important concept that is fault time determination okay how to determine the fault time in different regions of operation let us see that one by one okay for fault time so here you see this figure that is equivalent circuits for fault time determination here what we have done is we have considered one p device as well as n device okay as switches so uh, the p device switch is turned off okay so the switch is open so n device is turned on and here also the same thing uh, when uh, uh, during the saturation region uh, v out that is the output voltage is equal is greater than or equal to vdd minus vtn okay in case of saturation and for linear it is uh, v v out is between 0 and vdd minus vtn okay so the total fault time is given by tf is equal to tf1 plus tf2 where tf1 is the time during which v naught drops from 0.9 vdd to vdd minus vtn that is the saturation region where and tf2 is the time during which v naught drops from vdd minus vtn to 0.1 vdd that is the linear region okay these two figures we have already seen this now for saturation region tf1 okay in this region the drain current is constant okay so, so we know the equation for uh, uh, drain current in saturation region which i have already seen in the second module that is id is equal to beta by 2 vdd minus vtn the whole square okay so this is the equation for drain current in saturation right so the current through the capacitor is given by id is equal to minus cl dv naught dt okay that is this capacitor if you consider okay uh, with this uh, the current flowing that is you should be using the uh, kvl that is kirchhoff's voltage law then we would be getting this equation that is minus cl dv naught by dt that corresponds to dv naught by dt okay that is equal to minus beta n divided by 2 cl vdt minus vt and the whole square here what we have done is id that is this equation is there right that we have substituted here in this case okay and we have written the equation for id in terms of capacitor that is id is equal to beta n minus beta n divided by 2 cl vdd minus vt and the whole square okay so this equation you should be remembering next integrating v naught is equal to 0.9 vdd to v naught is equal to vdd minus vt and after that integration what we are getting is you see here tf1 is equal to 2 times cl divided by beta n into vdd minus vt and whole square integration of the limits which i have mentioned after doing that this would be the simplified answer which you are getting for tf1 that is 2 cl into vtn minus 0.1 vdd divided by beta n into vdd minus vtn whole square okay so this is the value of tf1 after doing the following steps in the saturation next we have tf2 that is the linear region here the mos is in the linear that is the triode region and the current is given by id is equal to beta n by 2 vdd minus v uh, uh vdd minus vtn into v naught square by 2 okay that v naught square is not mentioned here so you, you might be knowing that equation so equating with the capacitor current we would be getting uh, uh this equation here in terms of one logarithmic term you are getting here okay for tf2 that is cl divided by beta n into vdd minus vtn into log of 19 vdd minus 20 vtn divided by vdd okay so the total fault time is you should be adding tf1 and tf2 okay these two if you add this and simplify you would be getting our uh, answer which is approximately equal to tf is equal to 4 cl divided by beta n into vdd okay so this is the fault time total fault time if we consider the saturation uh, saturation fault time and the linear fault time that is tf1 plus tf2 and if you consider vtn is equal to 0.2 vdd okay after that we will be getting the answer as tf is equal to is approximately equal to 4 cl divided by beta n into vdd okay so this final result is a good approximation for hand analysis and clearly shows the dependence of all time on load capacitance mobility and supply voltage so this was about fault time next let us see rise time rise time determination when the input to a cmos inverter goes from high to low 
the PMOS turns on and the NMOS turns off. Okay, so now for rise time, it is just the opposite of the off, uh, fall time. Here in this case, the P device would be in on state and the N device that is NMOS would be in the off state. Okay, so you see here. So here in this case, again, TR is equal to TR1 plus TR2, where TR1 is V0 rises from 0.1 VDD to VDD minus VTP. Okay, VTP that is written in modulus because it uh, the VTP, the PMOS voltage that is always positive. Okay. And the TR2 where V0 rises from VDD minus VTP to 0.9 VDD. Okay, so here in this case TR2 is in linear and TR1 is in saturation. So according to that, we have seen the figures here. In that uh, rise time, one change we have seen is this switch was uh, open. Now in this case, the end device switch is open in both the cases. Okay, yeah. First for saturation, in saturation, the drain current of the PMOS is given by ID is equal to beta pi P by 2 VDD minus modulus of VTP the whole square. So from the capacitor charging equation, we would be getting ID is equal to CL into DV0 by DT. Okay, that is DV0 by DT is equal to beta P divided by 2 CL. Okay, so this CL we have included here into VDT minus VTP the whole square. So since this is constant, uh, so we, we could be taking that outside here that is uh, integration from 0 to TR1. Okay that is equal to integration 0.1 VDD up to VDD minus VTP then 2 CL divided by beta P into VDD minus VTP the whole square into DV naught okay after doing the integration and solving this uh, this is the answer which we will be getting that is for TR1 TR1 is equal to 2 CL divided by beta P into VDD minus VTP whole square into 0.9 VDD minus VTP okay after you doing the integration and all you would be getting this as our final answer for saturation region TR1 similarly for TR2 that is the linear region in the linear region PMOS current uh, is given by ID is equal to beta P into VDD minus VTP into V0 minus V0 square by 2 so this equation you might be knowing it so from the capacitor charging equation so CL DV0 by DT that is beta P into VDD minus VTP into V0 minus V0 square by 2. That would be tending to DV0 divided by VDD minus VTP into V0 minus V0 square by 2 is equal to beta P divided by CL into DT. So you take the integration on both sides. Okay. So after that, uh, we would be getting this as our final answer here. Okay. That is. 2 CL divided by beta P into VDD minus VTP into minus 0.1 VDD plus uh, VTP uh, plus modulus of VTP is the answer. So this modulus of VTP is not mentioned here. I write it. Okay. So this is the answer for TR2. Now if we add those two that is adding both parts, we would be getting the total rise time. Okay. Now next is the delay time. So in a CMOS digital circuit, the gate delay is the time taken by the output to respond to a change in input. So this delay is mainly dominated by the time it takes to charge or discharge. So the output load capacitor CL, which corresponds to the rise time and fall time respectively. Okay. So rising and falling propagation delays. So the propagation delay during a rising transition is defined by TDR. Okay, so that propagation delay is called as TDR and it is given by TR by 2. It is uh, half of the rise time. Okay, that propagation delay is the mid, uh, mid delay that is been taking place during the uh, rising time and falling time. Okay, that is mentioned by uh, for the propagation delay uh, with respect to rise time and we have propagation delay with respect to fall time both in the between uh, the uh, it would be around 50% so that's why it would be TDR is equal to TR by 2. So this corresponds to the average time taken for the output voltage to transition from low to high for example from 0.1 VDD to 0.9 VDD typically measured at the 50% point of the output voltage swing. Okay. Similarly the propagation delay during a falling transition is TDF is equal to TF by 2. For rising transition it is TDR is equal to TR by 2 and for falling it is TDF is equal to TF by 2. Okay, so these are the rising and falling propagation delays. Then we have average gate delay. These are the different uh, categories under delay. 
to characterize the gate delays independent of the direction of the signal transition we define the average delay that is given as a tau average as the average of rising and falling propagation delay that is tav is equal to tdf plus tdr divided by 2 okay that is you would be getting our answer as tf plus tr divided by 4 okay if you do the calculation you would be getting the answer as for average delay tf plus tr divided by 4 so this quantity is widely used in delay modeling of cmos gates in the digital circuit design okay so these are some other things yeah so with this we would be coming to the end here okay so this rise time uh, here the, there is one uh, rise time answer is there that uh, it's missing here so if time permitted i'm going to tell you guys in the comment section okay of this video i'll tell you the answer of rise time in the comments of this video i'll i'll pin that comment okay so here it's missing so i'll do the calculation and i'll tell you the answer okay yeah so that's all for this video guys hope you understood this uh, these concepts and uh, this kind of video, uh, this kind of questions would be definitely appearing for the exam so please uh, uh, consider this watch this video and uh, uh, this if you want this material it to be available in the description go to the video's description and access it and uh, read it okay so that's all guys like share subscribe to our channel please support us by subscribing your to our channel hit the bell icon for the latest notifications okay thank you